So since we are finding it difficult to bring in investors into Nagaland, we want to build up our own homegrown entrepreneurs, Naga boys and girls, to start enterprise and entrepreneurship. And uh, that's how we are uh, busy, you know, that there, there are three, four uh, exercises that we've already initiated. Uh, women entrepreneurship is one, and another is export, import, uh, this uh, training and all that, that is going on. But over and above that, we want to select boys and girls to let them interact and interface with colleges and universities outside in India so that uh, you know they, they go into proper, uh, they get proper education, they have proper set of thinking processes. Our local boys and girls <coughs> don't have um, the, uh, you know, uh, maybe people in Kohima, Dimapur, they will be knowing few institutions here and there. <coughs> but it, uh, many don't know where to go for studies, how to go for studies and all that. So with that in mind, we are having a education, we call it the Edu Connect. You know, connection between the students over here and then between with the institutions from outside the, the state. So far about 30, 40 institutions have already confirmed and we are trying to get more institutions to come jo uh, join the group. And um, uh, these uh, people who have, uh, who have uh, this thing, will be setting up stalls, It will be just, just like a kind of a fair, we'll be setting up stalls and we'll be, we want your help to get the students to come here. We are writing to the institutions, uh, we've just finished a meeting with the concerned departments, uh, education department was here, higher education was here, technical education, forest, and all these departments were here. So we are the departments are also uh, striving to get the participation and also we want to get the participation of students from outside the other districts like Mon, Twinsang and other, other outlining areas. So uh, we want a lot of participation from the students to find out, uh, to know more about the education institutions and what kind of education they give. Many of the students which are, are going to pass class 11 and 12 or maybe even 10, uh, they may like to get to know some institutions so that they can start preparing for those things. That is one of the purposes of this, to keep the, expo the student exposure to the education institution and get, get it connected. The other area is, um, there are many educational institutions offering free education, which our students and our uh, boys and girls don't know. There are many, especially uh, colleges which are vocational, uh, having a giving vocational education, they are able to connect with the banks and then we, uh, they can help the students to avail educational loans, which many of our Naga boys and girls don't know. So these are the things we want to connect and then to tie up in this uh, Education Connect uh, Fair. And as I've mentioned, about, about 40 institutions have so far confirmed. We have a long list of educational institutions. And uh, I think uh, uh, it will be a, a more profitable affair for our students to have a connection. So we are requesting the press and the fraternity to kindly um, you know, give a lot of publicity. Unfortunately, we don't have much time. We have another big conclave coming up. That is, I'm just giving a hint, a CSR conclave, a corporate social responsibility conclave, end of the month, May. Whereas this we are wanting to have on the 10th and the 11th of this May. So a little bit of a shortfall of time is there. Two, a basic reason, one, Article 371A. The land cannot be transferred to outsiders. So a person, let's say, who wants to invest a few crores or a few hundred crores to open up industries or these things, if he doesn't have a land ownership, he finds it very difficult for him to get, decide to invest that much money. 
The other issue is our law and order situation with the insurgency, don't know when the fighting will take place or killing. You know, there have been many people who have come in here, but that they, we invited them. Only when they have come here, they know that Nagaland is accessible. Otherwise, even from South India, Western Europe, they still think Nagaland is full of headhunting insurgents, and then they're, they were scared to come. So these are the constraints. And then, of course, there are other reasons. The investors, they look for, uh, for uh, skilled manpower for the specific. Now the skilled manpower is not available. Unless the industry start, it'll take four or five years for the skilled manpower to be made available. That is one. Number four. <clears throat> when an industrialist wants to start up industry here in Nagaland, he would like to bring his own people to, uh, to help out and then get the industries going. We don't uh, much favor outsiders coming and working here. I mean, you all know the situation. So if a person say, wanting to set up a huge industry, maybe involving 100, 200 crores, uh, the, the kind of people that he'd like to bring in here, he, he can't do it. No, no, from all over. Say some are, uh, we've got something, <coughs> Himachal, Punjab, Rajasthan, Lakno, Dehradun, and then down up to South India, Bangalore, Chennai, and all this, all over the country. We are trying to connect with them. We have a partnership with an institution called NEEC. North East North East Education Council. Council. They are the NGO, which is working outside, and then they are confirming the authenticity of the uh, institution, and then they are bringing them in. Then side by side, we will have a seminar to talk about the problems of education. You know, globally, the systems of education are changing. I think we know about that. Instead of the old three R read, write, and arithmetic uh, education, memorization system of education, the digital and the other medias, those education systems are coming up. So worldwide, the, the, the change, the, there's a change in system of education.